All right, update to my saga where my inverter doesn't seem to like more than one string of panels on separate MPPT inputs at once. So I started just playing around with the multimeter and seeing what I could see. And something I noticed is it seems like, it seems like the two strings of cylinders were fine and it might have been the string of Jinkos that was throwing things off. If I ran just the string of Jinkos, it would work fine. But if I ran a cylinder and a Jinko, it didn't work fine. So I started playing around with, is there leakage to ground? And with the cylinders, there didn't seem to be, but with the Jinkos, there were. I could measure from one of the uh, positive or negative of the Jinko string of 200 volts to ground, and I was getting about 80 volts to ground. So not good. And um, I do have these just laying on the ground. I didn't have a permanent array set up for these, which as y'all were pointing out, probably be good. Um, this is kind of my test bed, so I didn't have a permanent thing, so I just had them laying on the ground. But as I'm pulling them up, I'm realizing that there's a lot of moisture under these panels. And while they are sealed, sealed, um, it could be the MC4 connectors or something is, is leaking to ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm setting them up about an angle here. I'm gonna let them dry out today, kind of test them throughout the day and see if that um, gets things to where they're not leaking to ground and maybe I'll be able to run multiple strings. Oh my goodness, it's working. So we're getting 670 watts off of those Jinkos, 193 off the cylinders on the ground. It is charging the battery and supplying some consumption power at the same time, which is slick. You can see that we're not pulling anything from the grid over here. So for whatever reason, my, uh, my heat pump is only using 225 watts. Let me refresh and see what it's doing here. Um, oh, look at that. It's even pushing power to the grid. I haven't seen this before. Um, so you can set it to where it's doing zero export. So apparently right now I have it set to uh, the default, which is provide battery charging and consumption first. And then if you've got extra send to the grid, um, this is set to 56 volts as being full, which is a little bit low. That's like four volts a cell. It's a 14S lithium ion battery. So it's pulling in 466 watts. It could do up to about a kilowatt um, if it wasn't full, but that's why some of it's being sent to the grid, uh, which not really being sent to the grid. Well, I guess it could be. Depends on everything else too. And then the big thing that I was able to fix today is that I'm no longer getting, I was getting spikes similar to this, but much more consistent um, because this, this dark orange is what I'm using in my house, um, which is essentially what's over here because this is all kind of like an isolated piece of my house. And you can see that it's no longer going up and down. It's a much more consistent line. And the fix was that this array right here, this PV2 array, uh, had some leakage to ground and I think that was just from moisture panels can only handle so much moisture and connectors and all that so getting them up off the ground a little bit so they can air out is working just fine and you can see it's much more stable now all right so check this out we went into the settings here and feed in grid I disabled and it's still showing like 55 watts export power let's see if that dropped anymore zero watts. Now it's trying to only supply enough power as what the heat pump needs. That's the only thing over here in consumption is the heat pump. So I've got these current transformers, like logically they would be right here um, so that it can tell how much power this heat pump's trying to pull from the grid and instead supply it from solar. So my PV input is now a whole lot lower but that's because I told it to not export to the grid. This probably seems silly, but the most exciting thing about this right now for me is that now I've got a working setup and I can do things like find out over the course of a day how well these cylinders do up against a building versus on the ground versus maybe on some black tarp or maybe on some white tarp up off the ground a little bit. So you'll set up, I got three MPPTs and they can record data individually and I can get some real numbers. And you know, I could even leave a control of like a standard 1.6 kilowatt solar array there uh, to be able to base them against. Now, obviously the, the area back here, depending on where you're at, is gonna have shadowing in the morning or in the evening or in the, <laughs> the seasonally. Because seasonally, 
the uh, sun comes to about there and up only uh, due to the chimney Whoop. up there is gonna come across in the winter solstice we are almost at summer solstice here uh, which means that as you can see I'm getting sun way back up to here but realistically it won't always be there so this is exciting it works it works obviously there's a lot more things on this inverter that i need to test and i haven't even started with any of the off-grid pieces of it because right now all i'm doing is trying to set up the zero consumption to offset this one heat pump um, to the house but that's one step 